Hello everyone, I'm Paula Villa, I'm a PhD student uh, at the Paris School of Economics and today I'm going to present to you a joint work with uh, uh, Dominique Van de Waal and Sylvie Lambert, sorry, uh, which are here in the room. And I'm going to talk about uh, marital trajectories and women's well-being in Senegal. So first I'm going to give you a bit of motivation. So in Senegal, um, divorces are frequent and widowhood is a a common situation for most women, uh, more particularly at a certain point uh, in their life. And this is mainly due to the fact that they marry uh, men that are at least uh, 10 years older on, on average. And uh, indeed, if we look at uh, the data, uh, what the, the data I'm going to present you within a few slides says, in 2006 and 2007 in Senegal, um, among ever married women, we had an um, um, Almost 90% of uh, women that uh, were current widows or remarried after uh, widowhood, and 30% uh, that were current uh, divorced women or uh, married after a divorce. So, if you sum these two figures, you have about at least so one third of women that uh, had experienced a marital dissolution in Senegal in 2006. Also, um, uh, remarriage is uh, pretty frequent and takes, when it takes place, it takes place uh, rather um, uh, rapidly. For example, for women that remarried after widowhood, the median duration between widowhood and remarriage is one year and for um, divorce is two years. So when it happened, it happened pretty fast. And so given how common these uh, broken trajectories are, we think that it's uh, of interest to see whether and how it affects uh, well, uh, women's uh, well-being. So there's actually little evidence in the economic literature, at least on the impacts of, um, of marital dissolution on, uh, women's, uh, on women's uh, well-being in sub-Saharan Africa, in particular when it comes to uh, divorce. So for widowhood, um, what we know actually mainly comes from the study of uh, female-headed households in which um, most of the studies looks at uh, uh, households that are headed by widows or um, divorced women and uh, then uh, analyze uh, the welfare impacts of, uh, of this uh, uh, mar situation, uh, marital situation. But actually what happened is that these papers uh, don't look at or uh, neglect the impact of remarriage. So because most of those women that are married are absorbed within a, a household that is headed by a man. So here I'm citing some of the papers uh, of the literature that looks at um, female-headed households um, and uh, in particular at uh, widows. And what they find is pretty mixed, so actually more negative than positive, but for example, um, Appleton, Aurel and Krishnan and Van de Waal find more negative impact of widowhood in a certain uh, um, set of uh, welfare indicators, wh whereas uh, Chapoto and Aral find um, very heterogeneous impact of widowhood on uh, land access. Uh, for divorce, the core of what we know is mainly given by, by other type of social sciences, mainly uh, sociology and demography and uh, anthropology. And the, what they find is really more linked to the fact that divorce can be see, uh, seen as a means of emancipation, mainly because we're in a context where the first marriage is often an arranged marriage between the family of the groom and the bride. And so divorce is a way for the woman to escape uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, marriage that is not a love marriage. And um, through remarriage, she can choose a better or better suited husband to, to, uh, for, her, for her. But at the same time, there's some evidence that uh, divorce, because it's almost always linked also with some kind of social stigma, can be uh, linked to some difficulties in terms of uh, material support. In the case, for example, where uh, the, divorce, uh, the divorce can be a bit uh, um, stigmatized by our social uh, network. So for both we, uh, divorce and widowhood, we can see that there is, we can see some potential association with negative consequences, and uh, these consequences can be probably uh, smoothed by remarriage or not. So there's potentially some um, long-lasting effects of this dissolution on, uh, on uh, welfare. 
So what this paper does, we think that it's, uh, at least to our knowledge, one of the first to directly study the relationship between marriage dissolution and uh, women's well-being in Senegal. It uses a rather recent and nationally uh, representative uh, data from a household survey that I'm gonna like, um, uh, detail a bit more uh, within a few slides. And we also use some DHS data to firstly document uh, Senegalese uh, women's uh, uh, marital trajectories, then to try to provide some evidence on the correlation between current consumption and other uh, dimensions of welfare, so the link between uh, the uh, um, marital situation and some levels, so some indicators, proxies of welfare. And uh, lastly, to um, analyze the effects of selection to widowhood, divorce, and remarriage that might be at play, because obviously there's a lot of selection and endogeneity going on. Um, so really we're not claiming that we have a, a proper one directional um, causal link because of all these reasons of, uh, of selection and endogeneity, but we do think that um, we have some pretty um, salient patterns and correlations that are worth uh, documenting. So, some preview of the results. We find that divorce and widowhood are associated with very different consequences for those women. Divorce seems to be a way to gain some relative uh, autonomy. Uh, education playing really a positive uh, role, mainly uh, on the selection part. And uh, whereas widowhood, uh, widowhood sorry, is associated with more negative consequences and that are uh, not mitigated by a remarriage. And in particular, we find that Leviratic marriages, which are the fact that uh, a widow can marry the brother or some relative of the deceased husband, play a, a very uh, negative role, at least correlated with the level of consumption. So now I'm going to give you, so sorry, this uh, is going to be the outline of the presentation. I'm going to start giving some institutional backgrounds um, of the marriage uh, market or um, uh, the marriage legislation in Senegal. Then I'm going to uh, detail you the data we use, provide you some descriptive statistics, and uh, then analyze differences in welfare uh, levels um, before really looking at the selection into widowhood and divorce and remarriage. So the marriage market in Senegal. So first to give you like a broad um, picture of what is uh, Senegal for a woman in 2006. Uh, so Senegal is a Muslim country. It's uh, characterized by several ethnic groups, from the world of being the ma majority group, and the patrilocal and patrilineal norms prevail in, uh, in Senegal. Um, households are mainly extended, so on average there's eight individuals per household, but this is really on average because you can find very um, small and nuclear uh, households, for example in Senegal where the husband lives with the wife, and in rural areas, very large households with more than 30 individuals living together. And they're extended in the sense also that uh, there are several adult, um, married adults li living together that do not share a, a nuclear uh, a link. So they're not necessarily brothers and sisters and mothers and, uh, and sons or daughters. Um, some marriage features, so on average women marry at 18 with um, an husband that is at least 10 years older. Um, during the ceremony there's some uh, payments that are exchanged, so it's here it's a bride price so from the groom to um, the wife or the family of the wife. Um, so I'm not going to talk during this uh, uh, presentation about the effects of uh, bride price, but bride price is more uh, at stake during the first uh, marriage and not that much during the, um, uh, the remarriage or the second or third marriage. And women had their first child uh, on average one year after uh, marriage. Um, other type of features of the marital arrangement that we in Senegal, so there's some polygamy, so um, uh, one, one third more or less of married women are in polygamous unions, um, a bit more. And there's also non co residency, meaning that a woman can uh, live in a separate dwelling than uh, her husband's one. And in case of widowhood, there's um, le levirate uh, marriage. So, levirate marriage in our sample, we have 
half of uh, uh, widows that remarried that remarried within a liberated marriage and the other half that that don't and so liberated marriage can be seen somehow as uh, some kind of insurance maybe for the women because it is a guarantee that after the decease of the husband she can remarry she have she can have a, f a male protector and have some kind of social insurance but at the same time um, because we're going to see that liberated marriage is also correlated with a lot of uh, more traditional and a poor background <coughs> for uh, uh, for the the women can be see some at some kind of poverty trap where women are forced to remarry within this uh, these poor um, uh, marriage uh, conditions. So now some institutional context. So what are the rights and resources of, uh, of women? I'm going to start with divorce. So the, r the rights or um, resources that uh, divorces are, are mainly going to depend on um, the type of, um, of marriage they contracted uh, before uh, divorce, obviously. So whether the marriage was recorded in a civil register or, or whether sh they marry uh, under customary law. So if they married, um, they were married under civil register, uh, the divorce can be initiated by them. Um, the judge decides on the custody of the children and the husband can be required to provide for uh, the subsistence of, uh, of the wife. Whereas if they marry under uh, customary law, there's no available legal recourse um, for either party. And there's mainly a very asymmetric situation between uh, women and uh, the women and the men. So the man can um, repudiate his wife. So it's prohibited uh, by the law, but uh, de facto there's still some repudiation going on in Senegal. And uh, so the woman can also ask for separation, but the final decision is up to other, up to the family of the groom, of the up, of, uh, up to her own family, etc. So they don't have a lot of voice uh, in this process. And also children custody and child support is at uh, her, uh, her ex-husband's uh, discretion. Um, so yeah, for divorce, this is gonna be one of the main uh, variables we're going to look at. Um, for widowhood, so here the consequences of widowhood are more uh, linked to the position the deceased husband had and um, the number and the composition of children she had with, uh, with him. So if her hus husband was a, a civil servant, she gets a monthly pension equal to one third of uh, the husband's wage. And this amount is going to be shared among um, uh, co-wives in case of polygamy. Uh, if the deceased husband was in the formal sector, it's at the firm. The, the fact that she benefits from a pension or not is going to be at the firm's will. And for the more general case, so the family code, which is a set of all the laws um, in Senegal, uh, says that the individual has to choose between two options, so the, what we call the general case or the Islamic of customary law. So if the wife choose the general case, um, wives must inherit a share equal to um, that of the children, but under the Islamic and customary law, which is uh, the case, uh, the option that is the most uh, chosen in our sample, <coughs> oh, not in our sample in Senegal, Wives inherit of, of one eighth of the total bequest, and it's going to be it has to be shared among co-wives in case of polygamy. And here, son inherit more than daughters. But in practice, what happens is that wives are more uh, more often excluded from the bequests. So now the data. So we're using two <coughs> two main data sets. So the first one is called Poverty and Family Structure (PSF). Hereafter. Uh, it's been collected in 2006-2007. It's nationally representative, um, so we have about 1,800 uh, households and so about uh, 15,000 individuals. Um, for our women sample, we're going to have, so you know, it's not written here, about 3,000 um, 3, uh, individual records. So this data set is very suited for our purpose because of two main reasons. First is get detailed information on marital trajectories, which is not always the case um, in uh, the main uh, service we can have uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa. So we have a lot of information on the circumstances of the last dissolution. For example, the, the uh, type of occupation that the husband had, the number of children the women had with the, 
the CDC's husband or the ex-husband in general, um, the number of dissolution that uh, they had, the time of dissolution, etc., etc., and also it's get um, it uh, records consumption at a very almost individualized level. So what we call here the the cell level. So it records in a consumption at um, the subgroup level within a household. So really recording. Um, groups that are budgetary independent somehow. So for example, a, um, a married couple with the kids, okay? So it really records the consumption that are um, only for this subgroup, um, expenses that are shared between some other groups within the household and um, consumption that are really uh, shared for all the individuals, all the members in the household, for example, everything that is related to food. So this allows us to have like a very more detailed and precise consumption or um, that uh, consumption that indicates uh, really more uh, precisely what a, uh, an individual consumes uh, within the household. Then we're gonna um, um, complement this data set with uh, using DHS. So DHS for Senegal in 2005, so it's more or less the same period. And in this data set, we have more information also on um, variables that we think are very linked to um, women's agency, um, decision making, and resource constraints. So here, yes, the one of the problems is that for DHS, we only have women from 15 to 49. And if we want to compare PSF with uh, DHS and the national census, the rates, not the rates, the proportion of women that are currently divorced or widow are pretty com uh, comparable between um, PSF and these two other data sets. Okay, now some uh, descriptive statistics. So in PSF, we have at least 18.5 uh, women that are um, uh, that ever experienced widowhood, so here among ever married <coughs> women and 13% uh, that's ever experienced uh, divorce, at least. So I'm saying at least because um, we have information only on the last, um, the reason of the last breakup and most women, so here um, about one quarter also had another dissolution before this one. So, but we have no information on what happened. So this is really a lower bound, but then if we assume that uh, for all widows that had more, more than one dissolution, they also had a divorce before that, uh, we can have a upper bound of um, the proportion of women that ever experienced widowhood. And in that case, we find um, 21%. And if, if we do the same exercise, but for divorce, we find um, 17%. Um, so remarriage is very common, uh, in particular for uh, ever-divorcee women, because um, about two-thirds of ever-divorcee women are remarried. So if we look now at uh, our cross-sectional uh, sample, among ever-divorcee, we're going to have two-thirds that are now remarried. Whereas for a uh, widow, we have one quarter of uh, our ever-widow um, women um, that are um, now remarried. So again, these are still... Um, when I'm going to talk about every divorcee and every widow is using the information of the last breakup. So here again, it's going to be a, a lower bound of this proportion. Um, the remarriage almost always happen in uh, a polygamous union. So for a remarried divorcee, there are about um, half the of them married in uh, a, uh, a polygamous union, whereas for a remarried widow, this share is higher. So almost three quarters of them married uh, in a polygamous uh, uh, union. If we compare this with the share of uh, first marriage women uh, that are in a polygamous union, these shares are pretty high because it's just one quarter of the first marriage women that are in a polygamous union. And as I said in, um, in the introduction, half of uh, remarried widows are in a levirotic marriage and the other half are not. Um, and for an international comparison, uh, the percentage of widows and divorcees are similar between uh, Senegal and other um, West African countries. So here I'm plotting the proportion of ever uh, widow women by age group. So we see that here age is a very positive um, 
gradient of the proportion <coughs> of the likelihood to be an ever women <coughs> woman. Uh, so starting with almost no one being a vi widow to almost a uh, universal percentage of women uh, that are widow when you're 70 and more. For divorce, uh, the peak is more around 40, okay? Um, but actually this hides the fact that the likely, the, um, the marriages that are more um, at risk to end up uh, by a divorce are in the first uh, five years of marriage. So when marriage happened, it happened more likely in, uh, in the first five or uh, 10 years after the, the first marriage. There's also uh, a very, um, sorry, a ger generational component of divorce. <coughs> so here I plot the survival function by marriage duration. Here the exit event is divorce. And you can see that um, so the, the red line is uh, for women more than um, 40 years old in, um, in my sample, and the blue one is for those that are less than 40. So the, don the younger you are, the more likely you, ha you, ha you are to, have a, um, to experience a divorce. And there's also a, um, a geographic component. So here it's uh, the same exercise, but using women that were in a rural area at time of dissolution and comparing them to women that were in the urban um, area at time of dissolution, you see that uh, urban women are more likely to, uh, to divorce. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna look at the differences in uh, welfare levels. So I'm gonna start with um, the DHS data looking at more non-monetary uh, welfare indicators, and then I'm gonna look at uh, consumption levels. So, here I'm showing some um, statistics, uh, again you is using DHS, so it's uh, women between uh, 15 and 49. Uh, these are percent, uh, percentages, proportions, except for obviously age and the DHS uh, asset index, and every significant test is compared to married ones women. Okay? So Firstly, we see that uh, obviously these share are very different from those we have in PSF because of this age restriction. Um, so we have very few ever uh, widow women and more um, remarried divorcee and uh, three quarters of the sample is obviously married ones. So one thing here is that ever widow women are more likely to be uh, household heads followed by uh, ever divorcee women. And lastly, there's uh, the married ones for um, the widow women, so we have about one third that is a uh, household head and 20% that is um, uh, remarried. So these percentages really um, mirror those, oh, okay. mirror those of uh, the percentage of women that receive most of husband property. So this actually can be a reason why they, they don't remarry. Um, and when we look at the DHS asset index, which is a, um, a uh, index that is computed on the assets of the household. So the higher the, the index, the more uh, rich, uh, asset rich the uh, household in which th those women are living is. Um, you see that in urban areas, uh, remarried women are among the, the poorest. So married ones, remarried widows, and remarried divorcee, and the non-remarried ones are among the richest. Here, remarried widows are the, the poorest group, or are, li are living in um, households that are among the poorest. And this pattern is uh, the same in rural areas, or at least, again, the poorest group is, uh, or the women that live in the poorest households are the remarried widows. So now using the same um, database, I show, again, some descriptive statistics using some variables, so they're more in the paper, but some variables that we think are linked to some, uh, <coughs> to the voice that these women uh, have within their household or to the resource constraint they, they have, etc. So, uh, um, so again, it's pure correlation, but still. So when we look at the proportion of women that declare they have no say on uh, their uh, own health care, um, we see that, um, so again, married women fare pretty bad, 
and uh, non-remarried women are uh, pretty okay. <laughs> When we look at constraint on seeking health care, we see that permission is not really an issue in Senegal. The costs are more uh, a problem, and um, widows are uh, the most constrained women. Now, more, in more interestingly, when we look at the proportion of their uh, um, the proportional women that declare that their own earnings are spent on household, we see something very interesting. So here. Again, in Senegal, income are not necessarily pooled within the household. So um, the women's earning, so what they earn from their, um, their labor, is usually supposed to be uh, spent on, um, uh, for herself or, or uh, dependent on non-food items. So the fact that they spend some of their earnings on the household can be seen at, uh, like the fact that they have to contribute to the household expenses, so they're living in the, in the poorest household. And here we see that, uh, on average, one third of women contributes uh, to the household expenses with their own earnings. Uh, but, um, sorry, none of these women, one third, don't contribute at all to um, their um, household's earnings. But remember, we don't, uh, are more, s more likely to contribute. And indeed, they contribute. Uh, one third contribute to more than one uh, spend more than one half of their um, um, earnings in uh, household uh, expenditures. So again, they seem to be uh, in a weak position. Um, then, looking at the proportion of women that justify the beating, here again, uh, women women really uh, stands out. So this is really um, not controlled by anything; it's pure correlation, but it seems to say something about remarried women that even if they um, remarried they're in a weak position so this is maybe due <coughs> to the fact that they were um, very uh, <coughs> um, they they come from very poor backgrounds to begin with or because they because of remarriage they they are now in a weak position um, so now um, so yeah, so this just to say that these patterns are, are going to be seen also in PSF. So we really think that marital status is a uh, very interesting and uh, clear um, dimension through which we can look at welfare for women. So differences in consumption level. Now I'm going to use um, PSF data. So using this disaggregated uh, um, consumption that I've had. Uh, uh, tell you about. So here I plug the unconditional means for the, the log of total cell consumption per capita. So um, by current uh, by uh, current status of the women, and you can we can see firstly that um, married women are among the poorest, and remarried widow again sent out as the more uh, the poorest uh, group. Then I break up this consumption by women that are, are in the variative marriage and uh, those who aren't and we see that this lower average is uh, driven by the uh, women that are in the variative marriage <coughs> and those who aren't in the in the variative mar marriage actually have a level of consumption that is uh, quite similar to married ones women and remarried divorces now, to understand a bit more the correlation between these levels of consumption, I regress the log of this consumption on a set of um, covariates that uh, we do think that um, play a role on the level of this uh, consumption. For example, age is square, um, the household composition, the fact that the woman uh, went to school or not, uh, the fact that uh, she had a, a son, the ex-husband or the current husband occupation, etc. Then I'm going to use, uh, so for so I'm going to regress this for each group, and I'm going to use um, the parameters of this regression, and I'm going to try to predict the consumption um, of a certain group of women if they would have been in the another uh, situation. Okay, so trying to find the contrafactual, the contrafactual consumption of uh, each group uh, in another um, in another marital status. Um, Okay, so here are the results. So first, these are the re, uh, results of the OLS uh, regression 
for each group of the consumption. Um, so here I just want to point out like the high returns of education for every group. Um, then the fact that having a husband uh, working in the public sector is also highly positively associated with a high level of consumption, as well as the fact that these women live uh, in a urban uh, residence. So all these co uh, coefficients are not significantly different from another. So this one is from the others, but uh, those aren't. And also the fact that, okay, for uh, divorces, uh, you find a very positive effect of uh, having a son 18 of, uh, or older. Then I'm going to use these parameters and I'm going to choose, so I'm going to break up the sample by uh, age group. I'm going to find, uh, so I'm going to start with a reference group here is a widow. I'm going to find the average, uh, the, <coughs> the average uh, woman in this category group. So I'm going to give uh, for the covariates the mean value um, the mean value of this group and I'm going to use the parameters of the regression to uh, have a sense of how the, this average woman would have um, been, what would have been her consumption in another group, okay? So here, so I start with the reference group is widow, so here are the different um, age groups and we find that widows, if they weren't, if they were remarried uh, they would have uh, consumed less. So actually, they are better off in their own uh, current situation. And this is true for urban and for uh, rural areas. Okay, so everything is not significant, but we see that mostly um, either the coefficients are, are pretty low or uh, they are not, um, or they are negative. Whereas, whereas if we look to remarried women, we see that given their characteristics, uh, and using the parameters of the other groups, we find that they would have consumed more in the other groups. Okay, so they, are, they aren't in the better situation. Um, so there's, again, a lot of um, um, plausible um, interpretations for this, so maybe because, okay, remarriage is a bad thing for them, or maybe because they were already um, in a bad city and they come from poor um, backgrounds and they have no um, say on whether to remarry or not and they still marry in very um, uh, poor, uh, poor households. So again, this is true for urban areas and rural areas. Um, then doing again the same exercise but w with married ones women we see that these women are really better off in their situation. And a marital dissolution is almost always associated with uh, a negative effect on consumption. We did the same thing with uh, using as a reference uh, divor currently divorced and uh, remarried divorcee, and we find that there's no effect. So for, um, for a divorce, at least, it, it seems that women really select into um, the status that is better for them. Uh, now we replicate the exercise, but instead of looking at age group, at current age group, we look at um, uh, groups of age at, uh, at the time of the solution. But we find again the same uh, pattern. So we know that this is really irrespective of uh, any uh, unobservables. And actually, I have to say here that this is probably due what I was saying, like with word is like due to these unobservables that. Uh, this woman come probably with uh, of more traditional backgrounds. And again, if I go back, if you look at the constant here, it's pretty low for remarried women. So this is can be um, can signal the fact that there's probably a lot of uh, um, unobservables that we're not controlling um, here and that are negatively linked with the level of consumption. So yes, I said that. Uh, same exercise so for aided dissolution. Sorry, and yeah, and we did the same exercise with duration since dissolution, and the same pattern applies. So here, widows that are not remarried are better off than the situation where they would have uh, remarried, um, whereas remarried widows would have been better uh, not remarrying. Again, 
conditional on the average um, levels of the covariates and irrespective of unobservables. So, okay, so now let's see what are the selection that is at play and why those women like are now in this situation, why they remarry or not, or at least what are the covariates that are um, um, uh, linked with this uh, position. So I'm going to start first with the selection into widowhood and divorce, then look at uh, remarriage, and then give you some uh, idea of uh, what is correlated with quality, uh, the quality of remarriage. So uh, here it's, uh, I'm showing the marginal effects of a logit model uh, on the probability of uh, being a widow or in the second column being a divorcee. So we see that um, women that are from more um, lower backgrounds, so that had the, her deceased husband was um, not uh, in the private formal sector, are more likely to be widowed. And also, though it's not very significant, women that are uh, were in French, attend at least once a French school, are um, less likely to be a widow. Whereas for divorcee, what is more striking is that there's a positive selection of um, educated women into divorce, so women with, uh, say, good attributes, so women that were more uh, educated and are more in urban areas are more likely to divorce, and also women that uh, had a husband with bad, uh, bad attributes here, a husband that were not in the private, formal, or public sector are more likely um, to um, uh, not to divorce. So um, women with bad husband attributes are more likely to divorce. So say a, a the selection here is driven with good attributes, whereas for widows is like more bad attributes, like in a broad sense. Uh, for remarriage, so I'm going to start with the, the divorces. Um, we saw that the more educated you are, the more likely you are to uh, remarry, whereas here, sorry, to be a divorcee, whereas here education plays a negative role. So when you're educated, you divorce and you're more likely not to remarry. Um, and for widows, and also for we divorce, we see that the probability of remarriage, remarriage is clearly linked to correlates that are um, proxies for a traditional uh, for women living in traditional settings. For example, living in rural areas, having a polygamous father, have been fostered before age of uh, fourteen, and what is the most important um, um, determinant of remarriage is obviously the the age. The younger you are, the more likely you are to remarry. Ah, oh, sorry, I forgot to say. Um, then for divorces, uh, the fact to have a son at time of dissolution, so to have a son when um, uh, when the woman divorced, is negatively correlated with the priority of divorce, whether it's because it's more difficult to have the custody of, uh, of the son while uh, being remarried, uh, or because, as we saw from the uh, previous uh, regression, um, having a son at time of divorce was positively linked to a level of, um, for the level of consumption. For widows, having a, um, what is it? Having um, children at time of dissolution, so the uh, complement of this uh, coefficient, is positively linked to remarriage, um, most certainly because um, having children helps the fact to have a levitic uh, marriage, whereas not having children with a deceased husband is uh, more difficult for them to be in a levitic marriage. And actually, if we plot the um, probability to be in a levitic marriage uh, <coughs> in comparison with a non levitic marriage, we see that having a son at time of widowhood is closely linked with it, whereas uh, here um, education thanks, protects them uh, from uh, being in a levitic marriage and uh, so helps them to be non in a non levitic marriage and as we saw um, women in this non levitic marriage are in a richest, uh, consume more, or have um, higher levels of consumption. Now, um, here I'm going to try to give you some sense of the quality, 
so of uh, of the marriage and how it uh, links with the uh, status of the women. So when we look at the correlation between DHS data and um, uh, marital characteristics and women's autonomy, plus with all the qualitative interviews that we did and um, all the literature, we can expect that a good marriage is firstly a monogamous one, one where the women don't coincide with the in-laws or with their husband. And um, in addition, we can expect that the following um, variables are positively linked with the quality of marriage. So having a civil marriage because it gives more rights and resources for women, having a husband working in the formal sector for all the pension that he can, uh, this can provide to the woman in case of uh, widowhood, plus le the level of consumption that is uh, just linked to it and um, the possibility to live with uh, the children of the previous union. So as a benchmark here, I use uh, women that are in the first marriage and I look how these characteristics uh, correlates with other uh, covariates. So here I'm just gonna stress out the positive role of, of, of uh, having uh, attending French school in the quality. So for first marriage women, um, and also, sorry, the role of uh, being in an uh, urban area. So for women that attend school and living in, uh, and, uh, and living in urban areas, they are more likely to uh, don't coincide with the husband, to be less polygamous, uh, and to have more a uh, husband that works in the formal sector. And this also applies to the probability to have a, um, a civil marriage and not to live with in-laws. So we're ex expecting that this, uh, we're gonna see, we're gonna yeah, analyze the fact uh, that probably this, uh, these variables also correlate uh, in the same sense for um, remarried widows and remarried divorces. And actually what we see is that, so here you have again the different types of uh, remarriage and the subsamples for widows and divorces. Um, <coughs> So I'm going to start with divorces. So we saw firstly that education it was positively linked with the priority of divorce and negatively for a remarriage. But uh, when we look at those uh, divorces that remarried, having uh, been to French school at least prevent them to be uh, in a polygamous union. And it's also closely linked to the priority to uh, have a, formal, uh, a husband working in the formal sector and finally uh, to have um, a hus uh, to to have uh, a, a civil uh, marriage registered whereas for women uh, widows sorry this education doesn't play uh, a role on at least the likelihood to be in a polygamous union so does not prevent them um, to be in a polygamous union so i don't have much time so i'm just going to show you here the probability of uh, what we call here upward mobility. So, okay, it's a very small sample, but we're taking all these remarried women. We're selecting those who had a previous uh, husband that was uh, working in the informal sector or the agricultural sector. And we look at the probability that uh, the new husband is now uh, working in the formal sector. And what we see is that here again, the two variables that are really playing a role, it's education and living in a urban a rural area a urban area sorry uh, which are like positive link to the priority to have some kind of upward mobility and there's no difference between um, a married widows and married uh, divorces so now I'm gonna conclude so divorce and widowhood are associated with very different consequences in terms of welfare for divorce, it seems to be uh, a way to for women to gain a relative um, autonomy. Uh, so current divorcees are the richest group in our sample, and education, as I just said, plays a very um, positive role because divorces are, are likely to be more um, educated women. Their um, uh, education is negatively correlated with marriage, and even among uh, remarried divorces, it's correlated with better quality unions. And uh, for widowhood, we have a um, more negative consequences that are not uh, mitigated by a remarriage. First, a double negative selection. So poor women are more likely to experience widowhood. 
um, and most likely those who have to be married are the most vulnerable groups so at least we saw that they came from more traditional families um, and uh, yeah and there's also something related with the role of Leviat marriage either because it can be seen as an insurance for those women because they have this at least this social insurance uh, provided by the fact that they can remarry uh, the, um, the, this, uh, the, the brother of some relative of this is husband, but at the same time, maybe this is what, uh, this is some kind of poverty, tra poverty trap because we saw that this liberty marriage are also correlated with lower levels of, uh, at least of uh, consumption. Voilà. Thank you.